Gospel and Homily for the 18th Sunday in Ordinary Time. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. A man in the crowd said to Jesus, Master, tell my brother to give me a share of our inheritance. My friend, he replied, who appointed me your judge or the arbitrator of your claims? Then he said to them, Watch and be on your guard against avarice of any kind, for a man's life is not made secure by what he owns, even when he is more than he needs. Then he told them a parable. There was once a rich man who, having had a good harvest from his land, thought to himself, What am I to do? I have not enough room to store my crops. Then he said, This is what I will do. I will pull down my barns and build bigger ones and store all my grain and my goods in them. And I will say to my soul, My soul, you have plenty of good things laid by for many years to come. Take things easy, eat, drink, and have a good time. But God said to him, Fool, this very night the demand will be made for your soul, and this hoard of yours, whose will it be then? So it is when a man stores up treasure for himself in place of making himself rich in the sight of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Three clergymen were jointly owned a lottery ticket and they won the grand total of a whopping million pounds. The question was, how much do they keep for themselves and how much do they give to God? After a few minutes, the Baptist minister said, I know, we'll draw a circle and throw the money up in the air and whatever lands outside of the circle we'll keep and whatever lands in the circle will give to God. The priest pipes up and says, You know it's a little windy. I think we should throw the money up in the air, and whatever lands inside the circle we keep, and whatever lands outside the circle we'll give to God. No, no, said the rabbi. I think we should throw the money up in the air, and whatever stays up there is God's, and whatever comes down is ours. In today's Gospel, Jesus tells us to be on our guard against avarice of any kind. We might be tempted to let ourselves off the hook by assuming this only applies to the super-rich and not to us. And that's the mistake we could make. The Bible teaches that the love of money is the root of all evil, and an old Roman adage says, our fondness for money is like salt water. The more you drink, the thirstier you get. The great Norwegian playwright Henrik Ibsen said, Money can bring you the husk of many things, but not the kernel. It can bring you delicious food, but not appetite. Medicine, but not health. Acquaintances, but not friends. Days of happiness, but not lasting peace. Jesus emphasizes this when he says, A man's life is not made secure by what he owns, even when he has got more than enough. The avarice which Jesus condemns is that which puts profit before people, or when we gauge a person's worth by the size of their bank balance, we can also exploit people for financial gain. People become expendable and their dignity is often trampled upon. We are rightly shocked when we hear about child bonded labour working in sweatshops for a pittance in faraway places. Nearer to home, however, we hear about people, especially from Eastern Europe, who work long illegal hours with little or no break time. Avarice here, one of the seven deadly sins, has hardened the employer's heart to such an extent that he or she has no conscience about exploiting these vulnerable people. 
According to the BBC, worldwide more than 45 million people are living in modern slavery. The prophet Amos writes, the cries of the unpaid workers have reached the ears of the Lord of hosts. Figures suggest there could be between 10,000 and 13,000 victims of slavery in this country, trafficked from countries including Albania and Vietnam. About 3,000 children from Vietnam alone are thought to be working here in cannabis farms or nail bars. So the next time you go and have your nails done, you should be aware of that. The Gospel would demand that we don't turn a blind eye to their plight if we come across it. St. Paul reminds us today in the second reading, you must kill everything in you that belongs to this earthly life, especially greed, which is akin to worshipping a false god. It's second from the top on the seven deadly list of sins and can put in the balance, in the balance our eternal salvation. Thank you for listening. God bless you all.